tender, tender ray beef, no other beef so fresh can be so tender, presents Hearts in Harmony transcribed. K is for Kroger, C is for Cut, B is for Beef. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef, and Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. Remember that fact, ladies. Remember that Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste, and for this reason. Before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Yes, that's before the meat is weighed and priced. And listen, you get the top U.S. government grades of beef. It's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. So you get better value in top-grade beef. Let's take a Kroger Cut Chuck Roast as an example. Before the roast is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess waste and stringy meat. You're bound to get a better value because you get more solid meat, only a minimum of bone. No matter which you prefer, steak or roast, you receive more meat, less waste in Kroger cut beef. But make that discovery for yourself. Visit your neighborhood Kroger store and make it a rule to buy Kroger cut beef. It gives you more meat for your money. And now... Hearts in Harmony. When Penny Gibbs first questioned ex-nurse Mabel Peterson about the late Sam Ainsley, Mrs. Peterson's sudden change of attitude convinced lawyer Frank Carter that the one-time nurse knows something about the circumstances under which the dying Sam Ainsley signed his will. So Penny pays a second visit to Mrs. Peterson's home. As she rings the doorbell, Mrs. Peterson opens the door. Good evening, Mrs. Peterson. Good evening, Penny. I saw you coming up the walk. Oh, I was a little bit surprised when you opened the door so soon. Uh, may I come in? Well, uh... I'll only keep you for a minute. I do have a great many things to do, and... Please let me. Uh, have you come to see me about anything special, or are you uh, just um, passing through the neighborhood as you were the last time? No, I really want to see you about something special this time, Mrs. Peterson. I rather thought so. Come on in. Thank you. Well, what is it this time? I, uh, want to explain something to you. What makes you think you have to? Uh, won't you sit down? Yes, thank you. I will, if you don't mind. How's your family? Fine, thank you. I hope you told them I might be over sometime. <laughs> yes, they're very anxious for you to come. As a matter of fact, Mother said that she saw you on the bus the other day, but couldn't catch your eye. I'm terribly nearsighted and too vain to wear my glasses. <laughs> I know I'm foolish at my age, but then... What do you want to explain to me, Penny? Nothing very important, really. I, uh, did feel guilty about asking you about Sam Ainsley the other day. I had no idea you'd be offended. Was I? Well, you did seem unhappy about it. And I do want to assure you that there was nothing in my question that should have made you unhappy. I think my taking offense was strictly your imagination, Penny. I hope so. You see, the only reason I asked is that we were talking about the Ainsley case the other we? day. Who are we? Just a few of us at, at luncheon the other day. Mm -hmm. One of the girls said that Mr. Ainsley died unattended. And two of the girls said that his wife was with him when he died. I, I joined the others in thinking that he had a nurse with him to the very end. I even said that you were that nurse. Well, I was. <laughs> well, that settles the argument then, doesn't it? It was only because of that argument that I asked. I hope you forgive me. My dear, there's nothing to forgive. As I said before, I wasn't upset by your question. You just thought I was. Why should I have been upset? Well, I couldn't understand at the time why you would have been, but later I remembered something about the will. I thought you might have felt I was referring to that. I had nothing to do with Mr. Ainsley's will. I took care of him in his last days because he needed help, and as far as anyone knew, he couldn't afford a nurse. He was much too sick to be taken to a hospital, if you remember, and he and his wife weren't speaking. Oh, I, um, I didn't know that. Maybe that's why he cut his wife out of his will and left it all to that research company. You seem to know a lot about a penny. This all happened five years ago. Even I'd forgotten to whom he left his money until you just mentioned it. Just why are you so interested? Oh, I'm not really. Penny, who sent you here? 
You're not asking me questions to settle an argument, but for a much more important reason. Well, it was an interesting case at that time. I don't recall that it was interesting or a case. It went to court, Mrs. Peterson. It was thrown out of court. Yes, so it was. You know it was, Penny. And if the law considered Mr. Ainsley's will legal then, I... I don't think there's any point in talking about it any further. All right. Let me ask you one more question. Were you there when Mr. Ainsley wrote his will? I was not. But you were there when he signed it, weren't you? Of course I was. I signed my name as one of the witnesses. And a witness to a will cannot benefit. Or didn't you know that, Penny? I've heard that. Mrs. Peterson, tell me, did you... You said just one more question, Penny, and I've answered that one for you. I'm sorry, but I see no reason why I should answer any more. Especially since you won't tell me the truth about why you're here. I've told you I'm interested only because I... Because someone else is interested. Who is it? Why all this excitement about the death of a poor old man five years ago? Because he wasn't poor at the time of his death. And his widow didn't receive a cent of the money. Today she's ill and going blind. I'm sorry to hear that. But it was up to Mr. Ainsley to provide for his wife, and there are homes for old people who can't take care of themselves. Your attitude toward Mrs. Ainsley is far different than it was toward Mr. Ainsley, Mrs. Peterson. Why? I don't think I'll answer any more of your insinuating questions, Penny. And I'll have to ask you to leave. I'm sorry. I didn't really mean to make you angry. You haven't. I just don't have time for you this evening. Yes, I've stayed longer than I said I would, haven't I? Forgive me. Of course. And you will come and see us sometime, won't you? When I have the chance. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Peterson. Hope I'll see you soon. I hope so, too. Good night. Operator. Operator. Operator, get me long distance. Get me long distance, will you? And hurry. It's very important. Ah. Uh. Do you think I'd never get here? Oh, Miss Gibbs. Did take you a long time. (laughs) But I filled it in by trying to type out a letter which is also filled in with typographical errors. Oh, you want me to type it for you, hmm? No, no, it's just a letter to Mother. Well, you said on the phone you had some good news about Mrs. Peterson. What is it? Well, I'm just as certain as you are now that Mr. Ainsley was swindled. Well, Mrs. Peterson didn't crack, did she? No. And she probably won't crack, huh? We're not that lucky. Oh, we may not need to be that lucky. Mrs. Peterson did everything she could to control her temper when I asked about Mr. Ainsley and his will, but Mm -hmm. her face reddened several times. Oh, she's hiding something, Mr. Carter. And it's probably just what we're thinking. Good work, Miss Gibbs. We're making progress. Not enough to do much with so far, though. Well, I think Mrs. Peterson's already done what you said she would do. What do you mean? I mean that you said if we worried her, she'd try and get in touch with Robert Wilson, didn't you? Yeah, I did. But what makes you think she tried to contact him? Well, when I left the house and started down the street, I turned and came back to look through the window. Mm -hmm. She was at the telephone with an anxious look on her face. No, that's great. I, the great Carter, young, brilliant lawyer, call my quarry shots and then can't do anything about it. (laughs) Well, if she's excited enough... This man will come to see her, won't he? She shouldn't be too excited yet. And if he's smart, he'll stay away. Mm. What I had in mind when I thought Mrs. Peterson might phone this guy, Wilson, is that the police would cooperate and tap her phone wires. Well, why don't you ask them if they would? Oh, I have. When they found out why I wanted it done, they just laughed at me. Oh, that's a shame. (laughs) That's putting it mildly, Miss Gibbs. It's a tragedy. That was going to be my genius stroke. My master move to locate Mr. Robert Wilson. Address, telephone number, and pedigree without anyone knowing about it. Golly, I'm sorry the police won't help you. I don't blame them. They don't know me. Court records prove there's no reason why Mrs. Peterson's phone conversation should be checked in regard to the Ainsley case or for any reason whatsoever. Well, I guess that's that. Hey, wait a minute. I have a terrific idea. Listen, I have a friend who used to be a policeman. Oh, yeah? Uh Uh-huh. I'm afraid it won't help. Well, it might. 
Listen, please, listen to me for just a minute. He was one of the most popular men on the whole police force. Yeah. And he hasn't been off it very long. He knows the chief of the whole department. He does, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, what's his name? Keith. Johnny Keith. He, uh, might get Captain Harlow to listen to you. Oh, he knows Captain Harlow. <laughs> They're the best of friends. And you know this guy, Keith, pretty well yourself. Huh? <laughs> yes, I do. Better than I intend to tell you. Oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Well, look, will you speak to him about getting police cooperation for me as soon as you can? As soon as I can find him. That shouldn't take too long. Miss Gibbs, you're wonderful. You know, maybe I'll fire you as secretary and make you a full partner. <laughs> you may not know law, but you sure seem to know the right people. Yes? Good evening. You're Grace Billings, aren't you? Well, yes, I am. Well, Mabel Peterson, it's been such a long time, I hardly recognize you. Come on in. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Why, no, not at all. Oh, good. Penny said she saw you the other day yes. and that you'd be coming over, but I didn't dream it would be so soon. Oh, I hope Jed's awake. He's been ill, you know. Yes, so I heard. Uh, please don't wake him on my account, Mrs. Billings. Oh? This is really not uh, exactly a social call. No. Frankly, No. And uh, I don't quite know how to say what I want to say and make you understand. Well, uh, I'm sure you can just... Mrs. Start. Billings, did your daughter tell you why she came to see me the other day? Well, no, she didn't. Did you know she saw me again this evening? No. All I know is that she had to run an errand for Mr. Carter. Mr. Carter? Who's he? Well, a young lawyer in town that Penny's working for. Oh, she works for a lawyer, does she? Yes, she does. She just started. In fact, he's just starting, too. Mrs. And Billings, from... I was going to say this to you politely so that you wouldn't be too upset about it. But perhaps I'd better be firm and make myself absolutely clear. What, Mrs. Peterson, what on earth are you so angry about? I don't like snoops, Mrs. Billings. And Penny Gibbs is a snoop. Now, just a minute, Mrs. Peterson. I you listen to me, you... Mrs. Billings. And make your daughter listen to you. I'm warning you. Tell Penny to stay away from me and to stop asking questions or she'll be in more trouble than she's ever known. I have no idea what you're talking about, Mrs. Peterson. And if you like to make threats, I suggest you make them to the person you're threatening. I have my reasons for not speaking directly to Penny. But you'd better speak to her and right away. And when you do, don't tell her that I was here. Because if you do, you will have troubles too. Is Mrs. Peterson's warning to Penny's mother going to save Penny from trouble? Or will her actions make Penny redouble her efforts to uncover the mystery surrounding old Mr. Ainsley's will? Be sure to listen to the next dramatic episode of Hearts in Harmony. KCB. KCB. KCB means Kroger Cut Beef. And Kroger Cut Beef means more meat for your money. Right. Kroger Cut Beef gives you more meat, less waste. Because before the meat is weighed and priced, the Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess bone, excess waste, and stringy ends. Take a Kroger Cut round steak or roast, for example. The Kroger method of cutting beef removes excess waste and stringy meat before the steak or roast is weighed and priced. You get a minimum of bone, and you get top U.S. government grades of beef. Beef that's tender, juicy, rich red, and marbled with just the right amount of flavory fat. But visit your neighborhood Kroger store and see for yourself. Remember, whether you buy a steak or a roast, Kroger cut beef gives you more meat for your money. Ladies, make plans right this instant to visit your neighborhood Kroger store, the only place you can buy Kroger cut beef. Surprise and delight your family with a delicious and juicy steak or roast. And remember, in Kroger cut beef, you get more meat for your money. Because the Kroger method of cutting beef gives you more meat, less waste. Make it a rule to get Kroger cut beef at your neighborhood Kroger store. Be sure to join us again tomorrow. Same time, same station, for another thrilling transcribed chapter of Hearts in Harmony. <laughs>